Hi, the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Now if you're new to this channel please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much guys. Today I'm going to do a short video here. I just want to test whether or not these two Toshiba devices that were in my Bridge Tide amplifier project actually do work. And they're not like going to release the magic smoke when current is passed through them. Um, to do that, I'm going to hook them up into the 45 watt class B breadboard amplifier experiment that I've got knocking about. And I'm going to use a plus minus 30 volt supply. That white one there that I have now fixed, I just had to replace the two secondary fuses of blue. That was all that happened. And this should only be a one coffee job, please excuse me. Yes, my first morning coffee. Great. <coughs> now I will stress this is not really a good way of testing whether or not these transistors are genuine. I mean it's a way. But you can also run the risk of damaging other components in the circuits if these short. Um, the best way to actually test these transistors for authenticity is one by its looks, like the printing for instance. Does it look odd? Is the surface sanded or filed before a new printing has been put on, etc. And using something called a breakdown voltage tester. And they're designed specifically to test transistors to the specifications mentioned on the data sheet for the absolute maximum ratings of the collector to emitter voltage breakdown. And it'll either pass or fail. And another way to do it is using a curve tracer, which uh, Mr. Carlson's lab has gone through in the past. I have neither of those tools, so I'm going to do it the hard way and probably the more spectacular way. Because if these transistors do indeed go up in smoke, well, it'll be captured on camera. However, there's one little thing I'm going to have to do to that circuit before we proceed, and I'll just go through that now. So here's the circuit to refresh our memory. Um, it has been knocked about a bit. Uh, some of the printing has been erased because it's been sitting up against other things and it's just, you know, well, that's just, you know, the nature of dry erase. Um, but it, it's good enough for, for now. So, currently I've got the output stage configured like this. The drivers have a 10 ohm resistor going to the output bus between each emitter. And the collectors of the output pair also go through their own degeneration resistors to the output bus. Now someone uh, in the comments on the other video on that particular amplifier did make a valid point that really these emitters should not be going through these 10 ohm resistors to the um, output bus uh, basically bypassing these resistors because then that's not really doing anything to help keep the output stage biased correctly. They should really be joined between the emitter and the collector of each output device here. And he's right. Or we could simply do this. If I erase that and don't lose the whiteboard somewhere. So we erase that, that's gone. Okay, that's straight through. Um, I need to raise that more. We can simply just do that. We can join the emitters directly to the collectors and it'll do the exact same thing. Um, and the bridge type load amplifiers output stage is basically the same thing apart from different part numbers. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that modification and then we're going to test it and um, see if those transistors survive. Modifying the output stage to this is not going to affect our results. I'm just going to make that clear right now because the transistors were originally in that bridge tide load amplifier and tested at plus minus 35 volts at the time in this configuration and all it did was uh, on this side we were getting a really weird ringing in the output we had the output and then it would be doing that as it was um, it would get to a peak and then it would do that and then go down a negative peak etc. It was doing some weird break up here at the positive peak for whatever reason um, and then 
the driver went away. So I'm going to reconfigure that and uh, we'll come back and do some tests. Alright, I've got the circuit re-implemented and I've removed the 10 ohm resistors now and the collectors go directly to the emitters of the output stage here. So the collectors on the output stage, transistors go to each emitter of the drivers. Now I thought it would be a good idea to do a low power test first to make sure we're still getting an output. And we are. Perfect. Nothing's unusual there. Great. Let's just verify that it can do 4 ohms. Because I have modified the output stage. So it's always a good idea just to make sure that we can still maintain an output. Which apparently we can. And yeah. It's asymmetrical clipping, so, but that's fine. So we know the amplifier works fine at low voltage. So I'll just turn that off now. And I'll put this back to 8 ohms. And then I'm going to switch over to the other power supply here. So I can turn that one off. Alright, here goes. Okay, I've got the supply set up now and I'm ready to do the test. I've got this multimeter here in current mode on 10 amp scale. Going in series with the positive rail here just to see how much current the circuit is drawing. And uh, yeah, the oscillator is down at zero. So I now turn the power supply on. Well, we've got about a half, 14 milliamps of current draw at the moment. So here we go. Nothing's smoking or anything. We are getting an output, so I'm going to ramp this up. Yeah, it does get to clipping. We're only drawing about 800 MA, 900, something like that. Nice. I'm not going to do that for too long, because this is not an adequate heat sink. Alright, so I've got the scope in times 10 measurement mode now. There's clipping. 14 volt RMS. Okay. The signal doesn't look all that great either. Looks a bit funny. And at these powers, it's only like 24 watts. Okay. So let's see if this can handle 4 ohms. So to do this, I'm going to turn off the power supply first and then move my leads around okay contact nothing unusual it's about 32 milliamps now so let's uh, wind the wick up yeah it handles it and we're getting about 10.9 volt RMS but it is not quite symmetrical on the waveform it's got a little bit of what well, looks like crossover distortion and we're getting closer to 30 watts into 4 ohms so yeah it's not probably the greatest um, of design at the moment so the output transistor survived yeah so they're at least capable of up to an amp of current dissipation but that's not really a definitive test either so I'm going to wind this it's back into 8 ohms by the way I'm going to wind this you can see the quiescent current is moving around quite a fair bit. But um, I'm going to put this into full clipping, which is going to draw more current. We're at 1.2 amps of current dissipation. I'm not going to do that too long because that's not an adequate heatsink. And it's survived that test. If I left it go long enough, this would heat up. It's barely warm now, but if I let it go long enough that would heat up, the safe operating area of the transistor would be exceeded, and those transistors would go bye-bye. So, Dave's Electronics Lab's quite correct that these transistors are quite indestructible, if they're genuine. And I'm starting to lean towards the possibility that these are actually genuine. Now, these did come from Wagner but they seem to be performing as they should. That weird distortion we're getting on the positive going peak, I'm not sure what's causing that. It might be a biasing issue. 
but it's not really crossover distortion. Um, it's more of when it's driving closer and closer uh, to full power is when the uh, sine wave starts to get that little hump on it, but at lower powers it's not there. So that's, an, that's another type of distortion. So it may be that uh, we may have a mismatch input stage transistor pair or the output or driver pairs are not quite matched properly or something's not matched properly. It could also be the breadboard because I'll, I'll bring it up to full power, right, just before clipping and we can see that really weird looking hump thing there. If I change the time base, we can't, it doesn't look like it's, you know, crossover distortion. Because crossover distortion would be more here and it would be more pronounced, it'd be like well, it wouldn't be on that side, it'd be on this side, but it'd be more like a flat, and then it goes into the peak. So, that's just sagging, and I'm not sure particularly why that's sagging like that. But it's not really that noticeable either. But I mean, I know it's there, and I've told you it's there, and I'm not imagining it. But it seems to have, um, well, now that I've been talking about it, it seems to have buggered off. It's not as pronounced as it was. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's buggered off now. That was only because I moved the position of the trace, but... I don't know. Anyway, without making this video any longer than it's necessarily needed, um, I've proven the point that these... Output transistors, yeah, that's getting warm. The drivers are cold, though, that's that's fine. Um, it works, and that's all I wanted to do. So, I also wanted to test um, removing the 10 ohm resistors and connecting the transistors directly to the emitters. That, that does still work. Although, you probably should put them through the 10 ohm resistors to the collectors, so that might be the next thing I try. To see if I can, you know, maybe resolve that issue that I'm getting on the positive going peak. One moment, please. Both 10 ohm resistors are now back in circuit in series with each driver's emitter and each output device's collector. Let's see if we've made a difference. Probably not. I don't seem to see that weird... That weird, um thing going on with the peak there. Hmm, okay. And I don't see anything smoking, I'll just check the temperature of those resistors. Ah oh, no, they're perfectly fine. Okay, so still only about 810 MA of current draw at full power. Uh, which probably means that this is not the best amplifier design. So that heatsink bar is actually working for now enough so I can do some tests without it overheating. Yeah, I don't see that weird rise anymore, that weird sort of dip. Yeah, interesting, unless it's gone away now because the output stage has warmed up and it's stabilised. I don't know. Uh, well, without making this video any longer than it's necessary, I could try something. So I'll just carefully cool down the output stage so that we're back at, um, well that did nothing, although the transistors are colder, but let's see if, um, let's knock a few degree off, so uh, my multimeter's turned off, but that's fine. No, I don't see any, any weird breakup that we were having before, so... Mm. Alright, let me try this into 4 ohms and then we'll end this video. Okay, I'm reconfigured into 4 ohms, and just in case the output stage blows up... Helps to turn it on too. Uh, we're going into asymmetrical clipping. 
and it seems fine. Looks better than it did to start with. I'm not sure what was causing that. It may be the breadboard layout. But I might actually leave those 10 ohms in series there. Because we're getting more like 11.5 volt RMS out now. Which would be closer to 32 watts. So, yeah, great. That's excellent. It's not a definitive test. And it's not really an accurate test, but it's a real world test that, okay, these transistors will survive um, in this particular application without blowing up. So they, they're probably genuine and they probably would work fine in that bridge tied load amplifier is what I'm trying to say. So I've done the tests, I'm happy. I know I can semi-trust those transistors, well at least these two. I haven't tested the other two, but I don't think I need to. Um, I can put them on a part tester to make sure that the HFE and, and those sort of parameters are still within spec and they match each other and whatnot. Uh, but however, I'm going to leave this video here. wasn't very exciting, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you did, please remember to go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya, have a great day. Thank mm -hmm. you.